Hi, and welcome back to Catholic Mom and Daughter, where today you just get me, Jennifer, the Catholic Mom, because today I am sharing with you my secret reading addiction, which is reading books about books. Now that might sound strange and not even very exciting books about books, but I absolutely love to read about what other people are reading about, what books they like, how they find them, do they collect books. All of that is a fascinating world for me, so today I'm going to show you some of my very favorite books about books. Let's get started. Okay, I am going to start with the book that made me fall in love with reading books about books. And it's this one, 84 Charing Cross Road by Helene Hanf. I have a well-worn copy somewhere on my shelves that I've read multiple times, but of course I couldn't find it today. Anyway, Helene Hanf was a writer who lived in New York City in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. She was self-educated, she loved to read, and she wanted to buy used books, but they were very expensive to buy at the time in New York. So she wound up, oddly enough, buying most of her used books from a bookshop in London called Marks & Co. Even with shipping, it was still cheaper to do it that way, but that was fortunate for us because in doing it that way, she got to know one of the employees at the bookstore named Frank Doyle. And over the years, they kept up a very lively book correspondence and it is all presented in the book 84 Charing Cross Road. Helene is so warm-hearted and funny and sassy. At one point, she's very angry at Frank and she says, you sent me an abridged copy of Peep's Diary. An abridged copy, how could you? Uh, so her humor definitely shines through in the books. All kinds of interesting and fascinating little anecdotes, information, life during and after the war in Britain. I just couldn't put it down. Again, I've read it multiple times. Luckily for us, there are two sequels to this book. The first one is Q legacy, which goes into how she educated herself by going to the library and reading books. She couldn't afford to go to college at the time. The other is called The Duchess of Bloomberg Street, how she finally got to England to visit Frank's family. She has all kinds of adventures in England. So it is a trilogy of delightful books. Definitely put it on your list. All right, next up is this wonderful gem called Collecting Children's Books art, memories, and values. So this is a book about children's books ranging from 1900 all the way up to 2015. And I clearly remember the day that I first saw this book on the shelves at the library. I was so excited. I remember just clutching it to my chest and walking out of the library. On that particular day, I had to take my kids shoe shopping. So I let them loose in the shoe store and they tried on every pair of shoes while I sat on the bench and read this book. It has such wonderful pictures of different authors, of their books. It talks about their value, different editions. There are famous authors in this book who talk about their favorite children's books in the sidebars. There are so many hidden gems in this book. So I periodically take this one off the shelves and reread it. I love it that much. Next, we have this one called Books, A Memoir by Larry McMurtry. And yes, that is the Larry McMurtry who was the famous author. He wrote Lonesome Dove, which won a Pulitzer Prize. He also wrote Turns of Endearment, which became a famous movie. But I didn't know until I found this book on the shelves at the library that he was also an avid book lover. He collected books. He loved books. I think he had something like 25,000. He also owned bookstores in DC and then I think Houston and also one in Archer, Texas, which is still there. It's called Booked Up. So the book is full of his life with books, wonderful stories about how he grew up and how he came to love books. He didn't grow up in a household where there was a lot of reading going on, but over the years, he met tons of writers. He met book collectors, you know, working in the bookstore, he met all kinds of interesting people. The book is funny, it's fascinating. I would love to go to his store in Archer, Texas, booked up. It's still there, even though sadly he passed away in 2021. 
month, so not even that long ago. But definitely, if you love books, this is well worth reading. This one is The Enchanted Hour, The Miraculous Power of Reading Aloud in the Age of Distraction. So this one isn't so much a book about books, although there are a lot of books mentioned in here, a lot of quotes from different books, but it delves more into what happens, all the good things that happen when you read aloud to your children or when you read aloud as a family. So I enjoyed reading it. I have spent like a bazillion hours reading aloud to my kids over the years. So when I was reading it, I thought, oh great, you know, I didn't even realize it, but all these great things were happening neurologically and lowering stress and helping your kids learn. I think this one would be a great gift to give to new parents. It also could be a great inspiration to you if you're really struggling to carve out that time to read to your kids. Maybe you used to, but now you don't some more because they're older. This would really get you going again. It is such a wonderful read. Definitely pick it up. A lot of you might recognize the author of my next book, which is I'd Rather Be Reading The Delights and Dilemmas of the Reading Life by Anne Bogle. You might know Anne Bogle as Modern Mrs. Darcy. She has a wonderful book blog online. It's one of my happy places. She also has written many different books about the whole reading life. Did you know she used to live next door to a library? <laughs> I think that would be my dream. She could just walk there. She went there every day and read all kinds kinds of books. How cool would that be? She also takes a look at some of the dilemmas of the reading life, including what happens when someone recommends a book to you and you just hate it, or you recommend a book to someone and they don't like it. So I think that's happened to all of us. She tells a funny story about being at a soccer game and hearing one of the moms recommend a book to all the parents there saying, you should definitely go home and read this book. And meanwhile, she's over on the sideline thinking, Oh my gosh, I hated that book. Um, should I say something? No, she said, I'll just let them figure it out for themselves. So it's a very real world look at all the pleasures and pitfalls of reading. It's a short book. I read it, I don't know, in just a day or two. I enjoyed it that much and definitely has inspired me to read more of her books. The Man Who Loved Books Too Much is a fascinating story that I read just a couple of months ago about a true life book thief named John Charles Gilkey. He has been in and out of jail multiple times for stealing valuable books and he is not sorry. At least he didn't seem sorry in the book. Anyway, he's a thief who has stolen purely out of love for the books. He's not buying them so he can resell them on the black market. He just wants to own them because he loves them. So the author, Alison Hoover Bartlett, met with Gilkey several times over a few years, you know, when he was in and out of jail, and got to know him and his motivation and his methods for stealing the books. He was very clever, and I'm not saying that we should go out and steal books, but if you need to know some interesting ways, well, here you go. At the same time, she also interviewed Ken Sanders, an antiquarian bookseller who was trying to track down Gilkey and put him behind bars. So he had turned detective and he knew that Gilkey was stealing books, but he was always trying to pin him down. So in the book, Bartlett takes you through the fascinating world of book collectors, book values, first editions, all kinds of things about books. Honestly, I could not put this one down. I hope there is a sequel somehow. I'll have to check her website and see if there's one in the works. My last book today is called Bequest of Wings by Anna Stuff. It was written in 1954 and it's the story of a family's pleasure with books. How one family taught their children to love and appreciate great books, but also poetry and art and music. So Anna Staff was an ex-librarian and books for her family were just a lifestyle. You know, they never sat down and said, we're going to teach our children about great literature, but it was just a way that they lived. I thought it was really interesting how this was all happening before the internet. So if they wanted to research a topic or look up a subject, they had to do it all by hand. You know, look at magazine articles or talk to people or remember or listen to records. It was just a whole different way of life. But there's so many great books mentioned in here. Some of them I have never heard of before and I definitely want to track down and research. Also at the end of the book, there is a letter that she wrote to her father-in-law about how they spent Christmas 1943. I'm telling you, this letter 
it moved me so much. It was so beautiful. Probably my favorite description of Christmas that I have ever read in any book. The things that they did, the music that they listened to, you know, they didn't have TV, they didn't have cell phones, they didn't have the internet. The time that they spent together and their different traditions and the artwork that they had around the house, it is just wonderful. So I had to get this book through Interlibrary Loan because it is out of print. Um, at my library, it only cost me a dollar to get an interlibrary loan book, so it was well worth a dollar. I have this now on my wish list. And there is a sequel to it called A Family Grows Up With Books, which I now have on order. So again, definitely if you want to get started in introducing your kids to great books, this is a great place to start. Okay, so now you know all about my secret addiction, reading books about books. If you have a great book in that genre that you can recommend to me, I would love to hear it because I'm always on the lookout for books on this topic. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time. Now back to the books.